Hello, my name is Milan Dinic and I'm the press officer of FIDE at international chess events, interviewing players and officials. Today, I will be having a conversation with a prominent figure in the chess world, who for the past five years has had a key role in shaping the future of the international chess organization. My guest today is Arkady Dvorkovic, the president of FIDE. Mrs. Dvorkovic, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Dvorkovic, it's been five years over five years, just over five years, since you were elected as the president of FIDE. How would you sum up these five years in five words? Well, that was not as uh, expected, I would say. Uh, and coming to FIDE back in 2018 uh, and being elected as the president uh, uh, felt like a huge challenge, of course, um, uh, from the very beginning. Uh, but uh, I didn't expect that uh, it's going to be uh, as challenging as it uh, appeared um, after uh, the elections. Uh, starting with um, uh, cleaning the house um, and then uh, uh, when things were ready to like, go full speed, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, started uh, creating a completely different environment for us, uh, for chess players, for uh, everyone. Uh, and then um, political um, uh, turmoil uh, in the world, uh, uh, in different regions, uh, uh, added uh, to, uh, to the situation being uh, not that easy for, for us to operate in. But uh, I would say, uh, uh, summing up, uh, still it was uh, fun. Uh, it was uh, uh, fun building uh, a completely new organization, building the team, uh, bringing people together uh, and uh, uh, meeting those challenges uh, with uh, creativity, with, uh, um, I would say, sufficient flexibility, uh, going around different things uh, and uh, involving new formats, uh, um, thinking about new ideas, um, uh, getting new partners uh, on board. Uh, in different places uh, uh, and expanding the mission of FIDE from uh, just um, uh, official events, uh, titles and ratings to um, the social uh, role uh, that we are starting uh, to play uh, in different uh, aspects of, um, uh, of uh, uh, communities uh, around the world. So uh, I think uh, uh, that was a good period anyway and uh, we achieved a lot uh, but so many things to do in the future, uh, much more than we did. Before we dig in a bit deeper into these five years, and I will ask you a lot on these things you mentioned, how did you get interested in running for the position of FIDE? How did that come about? No, I was in chess uh, before I was born, as I uh, say, uh, uh, from time to time, since my father was involved in chess uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, uh, and also internationally, even um, back in the 70s, he became the international chess uh, arbiter uh, in the middle of the 70s uh, when I was uh, born, and uh, he started to play a role in the uh, Soviet Chess Federation, as well organizing tournaments, working as a press officer, like, uh, like you now, uh, and uh, doing um, uh, the uh, Soviet rating system uh, with uh, his colleagues, uh, uh, writing uh, articles, um, uh, so many things besides just being an arbiter at the, uh, at the event. Uh, uh, so he knew all the players, uh, all the officials, uh, and uh, when I became uh, a schoolboy, I already knew all of them as well. Uh, so uh, when uh, time came, when um, I became uh, grown-up uh, uh, guy, uh, naturally uh, I started thinking about being involved uh, into uh, chess activities besides just playing uh, myself on amateur level uh, uh, completely. Uh, and um, at some point um, I found myself uh, in the Russian Chess Federation <laughs> uh, when I was um, uh, already working for uh, uh, the Russian government. Uh, and uh, being the president of the Russian Chess Federation was the fir first experience of managing uh, uh, chess, uh, uh, besides creating a special chess club dedicated to my father in, uh, in Moscow. Mm. So this experience helped a lot. We started organizing events. Uh, we started uh, doing a lot of stuff, uh, mostly in Russia, but uh, also uh, in neighbor uh, countries. Uh, and then uh, step by step, uh, uh, we um, started doing things um, internationally, including, for instance, Tal Memorial uh, in Moscow uh, at that time. Uh, so when uh, 2018 came, when uh, I knew that um, I'm no longer um, uh, in the government uh, and um, I have uh, to think about the future, uh, uh, well, this opportunity just came uh, 
because Kirsan Ilimjinov could not run uh, anymore. Uh, and uh, uh, I thought uh, that's a good uh, idea to try uh, with my uh, experience of public management. And knowing, and knowing the chess world, so yeah. combination of uh, uh, this experience in the government and uh, uh, love for chess and uh, uh, knowing everyone, uh, not everyone knew me since uh, I was not traveling because chess uh, around the world. But obviously uh, you did, uh, were the head of the organizing committee for the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, and uh, that was the uh, last drop. Uh, it was by chance, uh, so I was not ex expecting that, uh, but uh, the reshuffle in the, in the government uh, led to the situation where I was appointed um, as the chairman of the organizing committee of uh, uh, football uh, FIFA World Cup in um, in Russia 2018 and uh, uh, that connected me to the sport uh, um, world sport organizations um, uh, immediately uh, and uh, uh, I uh, decided to run. Uh, I was lucky to uh, have many people who supported me. Um, I was able to put together a team uh, in a very short period of time. I'm not easy but uh, we managed uh, and uh, Travel, uh, talk to people, um, and then uh, yes, from from scratch, from almost zero, not knowing uh, national chess federations much, um, uh, we we um, grew up to to the victory, basically. Uh, but uh, the main thing was uh, to get uh, um, trust from uh, people that we can change something. Uh, and basically, those elections were about not changing th things or changing things <laughs> uh, in FIDE, and the people were for change. Well, when talking about change, uh, in your 2018 election campaign, you made uh, a lot of promises about change. And one of the things you said is, we will trust each other, but we will have contracts. Uh, you made also promises on reforming FIDE, on uh, having a clean bill of health, so to speak, for the organization of sorting everything out. Uh, how much of that have you delivered on? I think we delivered uh, most of uh, that, uh, not 100%, uh, but uh, uh, we created uh, a transparent uh, financial framework uh, for FIDE uh, that is audited uh, by international audit companies uh, every year, uh, and uh, uh, we follow the recommendations. So we were able to put things together such, such a way that uh, uh, we should not worry about um, uh, the being clean and transparent. Uh, and on that basis, it is uh, possible to build uh, all other uh, uh, things. Uh, but why was that uh, such a big issue in FIDE, uh, the lack of transparency? Well, Kirsan Limjunov did a lot for chess, uh, a lot for FIDE, saving uh, maybe FIDE at some, at some point. Uh, but he was also always bringing money uh, himself basically uh, and uh, the organization was based on the efforts uh, of uh, uh, a single person in terms of finding uh, financing uh, for uh, the tournament so uh, uh, that kind of system uh, is based just on uh, on uh, one shot efforts uh, rather than real financial framework uh, uh, it's just different uh, and uh, I think many sports federations around the world work like, like that, actually. Uh, but we decided from the very beginning that we are going to build a sustainable system where it doesn't matter whether it's me or somebody else uh, coming, it should work. Uh, and uh, that means that um, the budget planning, uh, budget execution, um, uh, contracting the partners uh, with clear um, uh, uh, mutual responsibilities uh, mm, feed and uh, partners and players and everyone else uh, all those aspects should be um, clean uh, and uh, that's how we started working uh, already in, back in 2019 maybe in the middle of 2019 uh, uh, that helped a lot we brought back the world championship cycle that is a major asset of uh, fide uh, at, uh, at the time we came um, to fide uh, it was in the hands of a private company uh, almost without any rights for feed, just the right to receive a small amount of money. Uh, and um, uh, we com completely changed that. Uh, uh, and uh, that created uh, also uh, a sound uh, financial basis for our future uh, work. Uh, so it's just, it's just different. <laughs> so you feel now that you have a system that can survive the leaders? So Not 100%, still um, a few things to, uh, to do, especially um, bringing long-term partners uh, rather than uh, uh, annual 
partners uh, for our activities, various activities, not just events, but various activities. So this multi-year partnerships uh, is the next step uh, we want to, uh, to do during the next couple of years. Now, one of the promises you made in your election campaign in 2018 was uh, term deadlines. So to have a limited number of terms, two terms per presidency. Uh, Obviously, the we, recent General Assembly has decided yeah, to abolish that. Yeah, decision. correct. Uh, when uh, I was um, looking at FIDE um, before 2018, uh, I thought that uh, Good people, um, but staying already for more than 20 years doing the uh, uh, same things. Uh, and uh, again, good people. I like uh, they, they're still in our team uh, now, and that's, uh, uh, that's what I like. That uh, those people who worked for many years uh, continue working since they love chess, they can contribute. Uh, um, but uh, uh, based on my experience in the government, uh, uh, I knew that. Uh, uh, the way how people look at things, uh, how they um, think about ideas, how they work, uh, um, should be always refreshed. So it doesn't mean that people um, uh, should be out completely after uh, some period, but uh, people should change their positions. Uh, people should uh, uh, get new, uh, uh, new roles, uh, new missions uh, 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 to keep ambition high, uh, to keep ambition for, for change. Of course, the position of the president is kind of unique in this respect, uh, uh, since um, uh, the only way to go is down, not, yeah, not up, <laughs> not up <laughs> even no way to go, to go horizontally. Uh, uh, and uh, still, I thought that uh, it's good to have a clear um, uh, limit. Uh, uh, a couple of things uh, that I found um, um, while working during the uh, last few years. Uh, one is that um, uh, four-year term, um, whatever the number of terms uh, is, uh, two or more, four-year term uh, is just uh, a bit short, uh, uh, especially when uh, you have uh, Challenging uh, global environment, uh, and you spend time not on working uh, on your primary mission, but on solving uh, some other uh, issues. Uh, uh, and the second one is that uh, uh, whatever the last term is, uh, you became a uh, you becoming a lame duck uh, uh, on the day of elections uh, of, for this term, since people already know you are out uh, in four years. People start thinking about political stuff immediately. And uh, uh, still, uh, I thought that uh, uh, maybe the system should be changed in a way where there is a, a limit, uh, but uh, with some uh, uh, special electoral uh, um, rules uh, that, uh, uh, that make sure that you can work efficiently during the whole period of uh, time. But other people thought uh, that I made a mistake from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, not everyone, there is a split on that. Uh, uh, but uh, many people believe that uh, uh, elections are still democratic. Uh, no limit doesn't mean uh, that uh, other people cannot uh, run and uh, win. Yes, that means uh, that there are other, you can yeah. run an unlimited number of times, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's still the, an election. Yeah, there is accountability that uh, uh, stays, uh, and uh, the General Assembly, the uh, delegates um, are very proud that they can decide. That's good. Uh, it's not like I'm kind of, I want to be a president uh, next time, uh, just vote for me. That doesn't work. <laughs> no way. Uh, so they, they do take their decisions. Uh, they uh, look at the candidates. Uh, they talk to the candidates um, and they um, uh, decide. Uh, uh, and if you um, do not achieve your goals, if you're not up to your promises, uh, you're out. Uh, as simple as that. Uh, it's a um, brutal <laughs> thing um, in uh, in any organization uh, like that. So you have to deliver so to, if I to, get to stay. Uh, so again, uh, based on my beliefs, I still think that uh, it would be good uh, to have some limits. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, based on the practical experience and what people in feed say now, uh, uh, well, they decided. They decided that um, uh, should be no limits, uh, but uh, with clear message uh, that you have to deliver <laughs> to, st to stay. Otherwise, you are out. So it's not a carte blanche. You have no. To, there is yes. no carte blanche. Uh, moreover, uh, based on the belief I have that people should be um, changing, uh, one of the most important things for me during any term, including this term, uh, is to um, have people 
who uh, can uh, go to the throne at any point uh, in time. Mm -hmm. uh, to have uh, um, things consistent uh, over time. So if uh, I'm out, uh, uh, not a completely random person uh, comes not knowing anything about uh, what we are doing, but there is a chance that uh, another person from our team will be elected uh, uh, and uh, will continue things that we, st uh, we started with a new look, uh, with a fresh mind, uh, but uh, uh, with a certain degree of consistency that, uh, uh, that will make FIDE uh, sustainable. So that's really important for me. Uh, so I'm not like holding to my chair uh, uh, and uh, um, saying that uh, I will not uh, quit at any point of time. No, I'm trying to uh, uh, to improve um, my uh, teammates' uh, abilities uh, to manage uh, things at the very top. Obviously, talking about teamwork and uh, improving the work of your teammates and collaboration within FIDE, FIDE seems to be historically an organization entrenched in inner warfare with a lot of fractions. Uh, you've tried to cross that division and... and uh, in fact, your support was, was global uh, when elected. Uh, how far have you gone in, in, in uh, breaching that, uh, that divide and bringing FIDE together in the spirit of the Gensuna Sumus? Well, so first that. were uh, important structural changes in the management of FIDE. Uh, before, uh, it was um, uh, just a presidential board uh, who managed uh, things with a few people uh, more active, other people just coming for, uh, for the board meetings, uh, and basically FIDE was uh, run by uh, uh, three, four uh, uh, people, um, uh, essentially. Uh, not blaming anyone uh, else, uh, lots of people were trying to contribute, but still uh, a small group of people uh, was involved in day-to-day -day, um, uh, management. Uh, so what we did uh, is um, uh, we established, um, I would say, a standard corporate structure uh, in, uh, in managing uh, FIDE. Uh, we have the board, which is not presidential board anymore, it's FIDE Council, so it's a board of FIDE rather than the board of the president of um, uh, FIDE. I understand that I, I'm personally playing a big uh, role uh, in, the, uh, in the activity of the board, but still, uh, there is a change uh, in that. Uh, and then for day-to-day -day management, we have um, uh, a management board. Uh, 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 that runs things um, on a daily uh, basis, uh, also with uh, um, around 10 people uh, involved, uh, full time, full time. And um, uh, that's a big change, uh, since uh, if you, uh, with the council members work uh, actively, very actively, uh, most of them actually, it became smaller, so uh, more compact and more efficient. And the management board runs uh, run things on, the, on a daily basis. Plus, uh, there are more full-time people involved in uh, various functions. Uh, so basically now, instead of five people doing things in, uh, in feed before, that were doing things in feed before, we have uh, like 25 people. And that's a huge uh, change. Uh, and uh, uh, for people um, uh, who, uh, uh, who are working uh, in their own countries, national federation or continents, uh, that's also uh, a completely different thing. And they know they, uh, they, they can contact a specific person for a specific function uh, and, um, uh, and find uh, a way to uh, pursue their goals and uh, to do projects, uh, rather than contacting every time just one or two people. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's that's one thing structural uh, on uh, um, how it helps uh, bridging uh, uh, things together. Uh, just more people are doing that. Uh, it's, impo it's an impossible mission for just one person uh, to put all people together. But uh, uh, when uh, uh, our team knows that I'm available on a daily basis, uh, on hourly basis, basically, uh, all around the world, uh, so national uh, presidents, um, chess presidents are calling me directly, writing me directly. They can contact any person on our team as well. Uh, they know what, they, uh, what we are doing most of the time. Again, I'm not saying that we did all those things already 100%. Uh, I'm saying that that's the trend. That's the trend. Uh, when they know that, uh, they feel that they are part of they, uh, that uh, they are part of the family. And uh, uh, even if they have different opinions on specific uh, things, they know that uh, lots of things in, in common. Uh, that, uh, uh, we, we Let's can put do. this into test. How many times do things not go your way in feed? Mm, I would say uh, uh, it, it's not like that. It's uh, uh, just 
Sometimes I want things to uh, to go faster, uh, and they're not going. <laughs> they're going very slowly because of various issues, fundamental, uh, cultural, um, and uh, fi sometimes financial um, uh, issues. So uh, it's still uh, the way how I think or we think, uh, uh, but uh, uh, just not as. Uh, but were there cases when you were outvoted or uh, overruled? Mm, well, uh, on the term limit, <laughs> a bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, more seriously, I would say I'm adjusting uh, a lot. Um, uh, that's uh, That was my approach uh, uh, when I worked for the government as well. I was not trying to impose my opinion uh, on everyone. Uh, every time uh, we had to take a decision, uh, we're uh, putting people with different opinions together, trying to find a common solution rather than, uh, uh, well, I was not trying to persuade everyone that my solution is the only one. So that's how uh, I'm trying to work in, um, in FIDE as well. Uh, so it's not like I have an opinion, then I'm uh, overruled. Uh, my opinion is changing over time okay. uh, based on what I hear from people and uh, what is being proposed by other people. Looking at uh, over your five-year tenure at FIDE, uh, there have been some uh, events impacting it. And, and one of the uh, key events was obviously the coronavirus pandemic. In hindsight, when you look at uh, the event, how did FIDE handle that? And how did you react to it? Well, the first experience with pandemic uh, was uh, tiny back in uh, Vladivostok at the Women's World Championship match. And the first part of that match was in Shanghai and China where the pandemic uh, started. Uh, so that was the point where uh, we knew that uh, some parts of the world are closing. Uh, and uh, I remember I even suggested to the world champion uh, uh, who defended her crown, uh, Jun, not to go to Shanghai, but to, st <laughs> uh, but to stay, to avoid, uh, to avoid being uh, closed. The second one was uh, at the FIDE General Assembly in Abu Dhabi when during the meeting we received the news that uh, the pandemic came to Abu Dhabi uh, and people started uh, thinking what, what to do. So that started disturbing uh, our work. Uh, uh, and I also uh, remember the coronavirus candidates. I was the exactly, the exactly. And the third one was uh, in uh, 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 spring springtime in Yekaterinburg when uh, um, 15 minutes before we started the opening ceremony, we received the news that the Russian government decided uh, uh, to um, prohibit holding international uh, sport events uh, uh, in uh, in Russia. Now, I, I remember in, uh, during the uh, Yekaterinburg candidates, uh, obviously the pandemic hit not just Russia at that point, but the whole world and hour by hour borders were closing mm -hmm. and uh, everything was closing and stopping. And it seemed that at that time, Chess was the only sport going. I remember receiving calls from the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, BBC, media across the world, Reuters, uh, inquiring about chess because it was ruled that because it's a limited yeah, number of people and, and the tests you could... Play. And what, yeah, we, we uh, uh, created uh, a safe environment for players. Um, they were already in kind of a bubble. Uh, uh, all those bubbles were created all around the world for different reasons at that uh, time. Uh, and uh, we were hoping that we can go through uh, this, uh, uh, despite the fact that the event is quite long. Uh, uh, and uh, every day I was uh, kind of praying that uh, we can we can do it. Um, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we had to stop it in the middle since uh, the decision um, was to stop the uh, air connection as well, uh, and the people would be stuck uh, uh, in uh, in Yekaterinburg for, for an unknown <laughs> period, uh, <laughs> period of time. So uh, that was a tough decision for me to take, uh, since uh, I, I really wanted to like, complete the whole tournament uh, um, as it started um, uh, during that year. But um, I thought it was also, um, also my birthday that day. <laughs> I remember I, I woke up in the morning uh, um, with, um, well, with the mission to take a decision <laughs> or, uh, or not to take it. Uh, and um, I had to, uh, to go with it. Uh, so we brought people back to their uh, homes. Uh, uh, next day, uh, and uh, uh, we restarted the tournament <laughs> one year uh, after, um, which is also a unique thing. Uh, for chess. But uh, we were proud that uh, chess activities are going on, uh, uh, and uh, uh, when over the board activities stopped, uh, we found a new way uh, online. Uh, events, um, uh, of course, online chess existed before, but there were no official events, uh, and. Uh, 
uh, we decided to do it. Uh, and starting from May uh, um, 2020 already with uh, Steinitz Memorial, uh, which was the first event, uh, we started doing those online events um, uh, every quarter. Uh, so the online Olympiad was the biggest one first and then the second one with 160 plus countries participating. That was uh, huge, um, a few weeks uh, long. Uh, and uh, people appreciated uh, that. Uh, and then with Queen's Gambit... Uh, yeah, the uh, whole new uh, wave yes, of interesting yeah, chess. And uh, chess.com and Lee Chess and other platforms activities uh, that started booming. Uh, and uh, now we have a huge number of people playing online. So the pandemic was, uh, of course, not good at all, uh, not bad, but uh, it created new opportunities uh, for us. But obviously with the rise of online chess uh, came also the rise of questions regarding cheating. Uh, we have various allegations over time, obviously the Carlson uh, Neiman case now recently with uh, Kramnik and Nakamura. How has FIDE, in your opinion, uh, was FIDE agile enough in addressing this issue? And uh, uh, some have criticized well, FIDE for, for, for FIDE, for any international, uh, official international uh, organization, it's a tough uh, issue. There are ethical uh, uh, rules and uh, principles and barriers uh, that we don't want to be crossed by uh, anyone. And cheating is one of the uh, uh, worst things that uh, can happen with uh, uh, sportsmen, uh, not uh, just in chess, but in various uh, sports. It happened, we all remember uh, uh, cycling uh, scandals um, as well, not just with doping, but with technical things. Uh, I remember that uh, uh, like maybe 20 years ago, something like that. Uh, and um, uh, for us, it's a huge challenge, uh, especially in the online uh, world. Uh, uh, over the board, I would not say that there is a lot of uh, cheating, uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, meeting this challenge with um, uh, three types of uh, um, tools uh, or approaches. First uh, is uh, uh, educational one, uh, so we are um, pushing the message thro throughout the chess world uh, that uh, uh, it just completely uh, out of uh, rules uh, and uh, yeah, that, uh, we cannot tolerate uh, that and uh, we are going to fight that, so better not to, <laughs> not to start. Uh, a second one uh, is uh, using uh, technical tools um, to uh, fight it uh, uh, before the events and uh, during the events with all kinds of scanners uh, and other equipment that uh, we use. Uh, uh, and the technologies are advancing. So uh, in any field of uh, human life, uh, when there is a way to fight something, a new ways to avoid, to go around. Uh, it usually is the uh, case uh, that the cheaters are the first to break the rules. Exa they, ex exactly, so it's, uh, it's a permanent process. So, uh, the third thing is um, using uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, that is used by cheaters uh, to fight the cheaters. So it's, uh, it's a game. Uh, um, it's cat and mouse. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but it, uh, also, like following uh, how people behave during the events. Uh, there are all kinds of approaches how you can detect in combination with, uh, with technical tools uh, and uh, analytical methods, how you can detect uh, potential cheaters um, uh, during the event. So we are trying to use all these approaches. Uh, and uh, I think people know that uh, we, are, uh, we are doing that and um, uh, that al already reduces the risk of uh, people going into to this path uh, of cheating. Uh, um, but again, we are uh, aware that it can happen anytime, uh, that uh, we cannot relax on that. Uh, um, the more difficult uh, subject is online cheating since uh, uh, after the pandemic uh, slowed down, uh, we uh, stopped uh, uh, having uh, more or less uh, official online events besides, besides qualification um, for some of the tournaments like Olympic eSports series, uh, for instance. Uh, that's a function maybe in the role may mainly of uh, online platforms rather than FIDE. But people are saying that FIDE cannot stay uh, away from this, cannot close eyes on that, since uh, if people are cheating online, um, they're, they're cheaters, uh, and um, uh, they cannot uh, be allowed to over the board events. Uh, that's, uh, that's the message that we are hearing, uh, that uh, we cannot separate 
online world from over the board. But uh, is FIDE uh, able to administer that? Because obviously you're not administrating those tournaments. Which no, are we can only partner with online platforms uh, on that. Uh, and uh, we can add to that analytical part. Uh, since uh, if uh, somebody is caught according to the rules of the platforms, FIDE uh, has to take a decision, formal decision whether uh, that player uh, crossed FIDE rules. And uh, that's where our uh, team comes and uh, uh, investigates uh, and takes uh, takes the decision. And uh, if um, there is sufficient proof of cheating, uh, the case is sent to the ethics commission that takes a final decision on sanctioning uh, a player. Uh, so um, that's the framework. It's not uh, fast. It's not flexible. I would say uh, enough uh, for. Uh, huge chess world. Uh, but if people will know that it is uh, possible, that there is a chance uh, that um, uh, you're going to be banned for years, people will think twice about, about cheating. Now it's still not working properly. So we are still talking to online platforms. We, we can see cases uh, uh, and scandals that are going around that uh, uh, do you have a time at, frame? at some point, FIDE will have to be involved in but that. But do you have a time frame by, by which point you think you will be able to say, now we got the cheating under control, in online at least? I think in online, uh, uh, it's not going to be under uh, full control for, for some time. Uh, but for us, the main question is uh, how to avoid uh, uh, having uh, cheaters uh, in our official events. That's the first thing. Uh, if we do that, then we can um, increase our role uh, uh, in the online chess as well. But first, we need to make sure that online cheaters are not... Uh, Within FIDE yeah, events. Yeah, on a lighter note, obviously, you play chess. Have you ever cheated in chess? No, no I, uh, since I, I, I love chess and I like playing chess. Not, Even as a kid? Uh, no. For me, well, uh, I'm not a professional player. For me, uh, chess is, uh, is not for um, getting prizes uh, and... Uh, uh, winning um, tournaments. I want to win the tournament, I would, but I want to win the tournament by playing, not by cheating. Uh, that's, um, for, for me, it's just crazy thought that uh, uh, you, you win not by playing, but by cheating. Uh, There's no joy, yeah. There's, well, why would you do that? Uh, and, uh, but uh, some people are different. Some people believe that uh, uh, any tool is uh, good for winning. Winning, uh, and if they have two phones, not one, one phone, they, uh, they, play they play one it. phone and to look at another phone to get Just the moves. To check the game. Yeah. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> uh, moving on to another serious issue, uh, which affected your presidency, obviously the escalation of the war in Ukraine, uh, which has had a global impact. Uh, it also impacted FIDE and chess. How did that impact you? Uh, what? happened uh, a few months ago, of course, impacted uh, uh, me uh, personally and um, us uh, as a team a lot since, uh, well, first, uh, many uh, uh, chess professionals uh, working from, of course, the pandemic changed the situation and people are working from their homes more than coming to any particular places, uh, but uh, still um, uh, uh, the barriers uh, for uh, moving increased a lot uh, and uh, uh, that created um, additional burden on uh, each of us. The Russian chess community is the biggest uh, in, in the world uh, uh, still. India is growing. India is uh, more or less equal now already, but still uh, Russia is the biggest. So uh, that put a uh, um, huge part of the overall ch global chess community uh, under completely um, different uh, conditions, uh, stress and uh, restrictions, uh, uh, everything. Uh, uh, and for me personally, of course, uh, it was a huge uh, challenge since uh, uh, with my experience working uh, for the government uh, in Russia and now working for the international community, I had to find uh, a balance uh, in that. I had to find the way not to uh, separate uh, uh, people, not to put people uh, to different sides uh, of, of the river, but uh, to keep uh, people uh, as, as a family, uh, to keep bridges, uh, to keep um, uh, everything going on uh, on a smooth basis. Uh, and uh, the elections last year uh, showed that um, despite of all this uh, uh, fallout, yeah, uh, people still trust that we can 
put things together and keep the family uh, together uh, with uh, more than 150 um, national federations voting for me, for our team last year. That's a clear sign that uh, uh, people believe that we succeeded in, uh, in that. Uh, uh, and uh, also I can see that uh, uh, we follow IOC recommendations um, uh, in our uh, uh, official uh, feed events, uh, uh, but uh, we allow everyone to play. Uh, and uh, uh, I, uh, I'm happy to see um, representatives, uh, um, people coming from all countries uh, playing together. Uh, that's, uh, that's really good. Uh, not in team events, uh, we, again, we follow IOC recommendations, uh, but all individual events uh, have uh, players from all countries with, without any restrictions. Uh, and uh, uh, people who mm, have restrictions uh, uh, where we follow our recommendations play under feed the flag, since they're part of our family. As simple as that. Uh, we, we cannot separate people from our family, so that's, that's the way how we do it. But obviously, with <clears throat> excuse me, with all these global events happening, wars, trade wars, sanctions, pandemics, uh, official and unofficial conflicts, all international organizations are very stretched and had to adapt to that. How has FIDE adapted to all of this in terms of its organization? Obviously, you organized events globally. You still continue to do so, but uh, has it become more of a stretch? Well, first of all, our, our team is very much international. Uh, in our team, there are people from different parts of the world. So uh, even if there is a uh, like sensitive moment when uh, I cannot negotiate with some of the partners, uh, uh, I have people who can uh, do it. Uh, and uh, our partners consider FIDER as uh, uh, an organization, as a body, not as one person. Uh, who, who is the president of FIDE, so that helps. Uh, and so otherwise, that would be much more difficult, uh, where I, I would not be able to do things and nobody else could do things. So having um, uh, very good people around me, uh, like Dan Rezinsozola, Emil Sotovsky and others, uh, they do some part of uh, what uh, I would um, traditionally do in, in the past. And that's good, I, I, I'm happy about uh, that. Uh, also, it's important that uh, people are united by the idea of chess, uh, that chess improves uh, your abilities, chess is a fun game uh, that uh, uh, actually puts people, people together uh, and um, uh, even with all those dif difficulties, people, uh, companies and governments uh, uh, want, to, uh, want to do things with us. Uh, so it's much more difficult, true. And all kind of challenges that you mentioned, uh, but possible, and we have to do what is possible. That's uh, as, as simple as uh, as that. And uh, uh, the thing that we added, the social mission of um, feed of chess uh, to our agenda, helps a lot as well. Since uh, yes, peop some people can say that we do not want to have tournaments now in our country because of those uh, restrictions and uh, uh, constraints. Uh, but uh, still, chess in schools, chess in prisons, chess in slums. Uh, just for uh, people with disabilities, uh, that, that all those things should go forward. Let, so let's do that, uh, that at least. You've organized quite a few events, uh, new events. Recently, it was the first Olympiad for people with disabilities, the most recent World Rapid Team Championships, which were held in Dieseldorf, which were the inaugural one. Um, Chess in Prisons is a project. These are all global events. Uh, how difficult is it to find sponsorship for this? We know that historically, Chess does struggle financially and always has been supported by the No, state. it's a kind of magic, but it was magic based on uh, on uh, hard work uh, by uh, people who are involved. Uh, it's magic uh, in the sense that uh, somehow we always find a sponsor. <laughs> uh, whatever happens, we still fi find a way. Um, and uh, uh, of course, it's easy to say, but uh, Behind the scenes, there are people who are um, uh, looking for partners, go around, uh, make calls, uh, and eventually find, uh, uh, find the partners. Uh, uh, sometimes it's me, sometimes my teammates uh, who do it, uh, but, uh, but it works. Uh, sometimes it's not sponsorship, but uh, selling broadcast rights as well, uh, more and more, as compared to before. You know, the share of uh, selling broadcast rights uh, uh, is uh, not zero anymore, <laughs> but... Um, uh, uh, a decent uh, percentage, uh, and uh, I like this trend. Uh, and now, we because we, now we believe mm -hmm. that our product uh, is uh, already okay, not the best, but okay for television. 
you started working with uh, TV as well. Uh, yes, you managed to get, I believe, ESPN also for uh, uh, for, 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 some, uh, for some for some events. Yeah. For them, yeah. You got a partnership. You had at least a partnership with Total, the uh, French energy giant, uh, as co coal investing. In correct, some and uh, and uh, that is based on uh, uh, on how they look at us and they see that we do right thing, good things, uh, and they're ready to partner us. Uh, the share of those partnerships is still not uh, big enough. Uh, still, um, official um, sponsorship from governments, uh, uh, let's say, for huge events. Uh, um, a partnership with, uh, uh, with companies from countries with uh, uh, bigger chess tradition, Azerbaijan, for instance, uh, uh, Georgia, Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, now so Soviet chess club. Uh, those um, uh, par partners uh, contribute more than new new ones. Uh, but we are happy to have new ones. And uh, uh, for instance, Coca-Cola, they not, they not give us money, they give us drinks, but it's still good. If you put uh, money value into the drinks, uh, it's a huge partnership. <laughs> it's, uh, otherwise, we, we would have to buy it. Uh, yeah. So it's the same, <laughs> basically. And we are happy about, uh, about that, uh, that people look at us positively. Um, uh, again, uh, the world is difficult, but chess is somehow makes people happier. <laughs> and, um, and that's why they want to partner uh, us. But uh, having new events, um, uh, just to make it clear, it's not about our wish to, to put uh, to, to have just a new format. Our calendar is already full of different stuff. We have lots of kids events, veterans events as well. Um, so, uh, but to bring chess to new communities. Uh, when we are talking about uh, World Rapid, Rapid Team, it's clubs. Uh, uh, we are going to prisons, uh, so it's a completely new environment uh, for us. Uh, uh, people with disabilities didn't have uh, many events before, so the Chess Olympiad uh, is, um, uh, is a big step forward uh, for, uh, for players uh, with different kinds of disabilities. Uh, universities, not so many universities are involved in uh, international uh, chess activities. Want to um, touch base on them, to reach out to them. Uh, we had the first uh, school team championship uh, in Aktau, in Kazakhstan, uh, this year. Uh, and um, uh, that was successful in more than 50 countries. Uh, uh, so uh, besides bringing chess as an educational tool to schools, uh, we also want them to have an ambition to become the best school in the world in chess. That's the way. Not just one player, not uh, who already trains with professionals, uh, but the school team. And the system, yeah, the community. Be, yeah. So we are coming to new, communi new communities uh, and um, uh, expanding our base. Uh, that's very important. Commercially, that will give uh, us an advantage in the future. It will take years before we will see this advantage. But uh, when uh, our partners will know that uh, um, Dozens of thousands of schools are involved around the world. Hundreds of universities are involved now around the world. The corporates also, World Corporate Championship, uh, are involved. Uh, when they will see all that uh, expanding, uh, uh, they will um, think differently about uh, partnering uh, FIDE. It's not just for the World Championship, uh, it's for spectators who follow that. Uh, uh, what about women's chess? Uh, obviously, that's uh, a, a, one of the things which uh, you promised investing more in. Uh, there have been some criticism that uh, more should be done and that women's chess still isn't recognized and the women still don't have the conditions equal to the uh, conditions for open event players where mostly men play. Yeah, first, we, we managed to increase prices for women events, uh, uh, not uh, uh, to equalize. Uh, it's, uh, it's really challenging. It's, um, uh, I would say it's uh, uh, for um, another 10 year term maybe to, to, to do it. Why uh, is if, it so if at all, Well, since uh, uh, most of the sponsors believe that uh, uh, the prices should go according to the strengths of the players uh, independent of uh, gender. And unfortunately, women have um, lower ratings and uh, lower results if you put everyone into one event, one open event. Uh, uh, so that's the kind of uh, current understanding that we, um, uh, we are trying to break. Uh, uh, that, uh, uh, the fact it also that impacts the, viewership, I imagine. Exa I exactly. The fact that um, uh, ladies are not playing as strong as men now is, uh, is not forgi uh, forgiven. Uh, it can be changed. Uh, uh, but investments are needed from the very beginning, starting from... Uh, 
uh, young girls uh, and uh, their career choices when they become when they have to make this career choice, whether to go to uh, uh, to other activities or to try to compete uh, equally with uh, with men in in chess, uh, and that's a hard career choice to make at 14, 15, 16, uh, or 15 uh, year old um, uh, girls. Uh, but um, uh, if you will be able, if you manage to show that. Uh, there is a chance that you can get uh, high prizes um, uh, at the events. Uh, uh, you have other opportunities uh, also organizing events uh, or uh, being uh, uh, chess uh, managers, uh, chess politicians, uh, uh, also um, uh, arbiters uh, as well. So uh, if uh, they will understand that uh, uh, it's equal playing field, they, they have a chance, then uh, I think the situation will start changing. It will take a lot of time. So now we just uh, increase the prices and uh, more or less uh, have the same formats and conditions for uh, for players. First time world candidates next year will be in the same place uh, in Toronto was open and women uh, women event. So a very important step forward, and that will increase viewership of women event uh, and that's really important and before it was a bit um, like distant from the global spotlight yeah exactly and uh, hopefully we can do the world championship matches also in one place hopefully we do not have this place yet but uh, uh, that changes uh, attitude uh, and that's good and we had some special sponsors also for women chess uh, since uh, some companies like this uh, this idea but again we made only first steps that will take quite a while the current world champion in both the absolute category and the women's is, are from China, both. Uh, the Olympic champions are from Uzbekistan. The uh, Indians are packing the chess events and dominating. Is the future in chess in Asia? And uh, are we to expect to see significantly more events held in Asia or in other parts of the world? First, uh, the past of chess was in Asia since chess was born in Asia, uh, sure. according to the, most of the sources, at least, uh, India, Persia. Uh, yeah, I heard the debate. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, uh, actually went, but, the but debate. still, most of the people believe it's, uh, it's Indian. Yeah. Then uh, chess came to um, uh, Persia, Central Asia, uh, China as well, where uh, it's, it was split into Chinese chess and uh, international uh, chess, uh, uh, so uh, it's a uh, mother of uh, Asia, is a mother of chess uh, anyway. Uh, and uh, seeing chess growing in Asia is uh, just a natural thing uh, with a huge population in Asian uh, countries. Uh, and with a chess tradition uh, in Central uh, Asia um, based uh, on, on Soviet tradition, I mean Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan uh, uh, in this regard. Uh, also growing interest in chess in, in the Middle East uh, uh, were also the tradition existed a uh, long time ago since uh, chess came to Europe through Arab world, through Arab uh, uh, countries, uh, from from Middle East and uh, uh, North Africa to uh, uh, to Spain, and then it was spread across uh, Europe. Uh, so seeing this trend, uh, it just feels natural. Uh, uh, and um, uh, Europe uh, will have to take this challenge and res respond uh, by uh, doing more, uh, by doing uh, uh, higher investment uh, into chess. Uh, and for Europe, it's, it's going to be really difficult uh, uh, since uh, uh, after so many uh, years of being uh, among leaders, now it's uh, it's more and more uh, but, difficult. But US, tradi US tradition is different. They're bringing yeah. best people uh, from, from all around the world. Yeah. Yes, uh, including country Asia. of immigrants there, <laughs> in their yeah. historic tradition. Yeah. Speaking about Europe, obviously a challenge there is that uh, there isn't enough state sponsorship, like it or not. Uh, there is a lot of criticism about uh, events being held in Asia or different parts of the world where obviously governments are willing to sponsor. But that is is the challenge for chess uh, in, in the West, that there's simply not a will, I guess, from, from the state to, to support chess. In the UK, where I live, chess isn't even, re chess isn't even recognized as a sport. Uh, but looking towards uh, the future, uh, FIDE, uh, next year it will be 100 years since FIDE was established as a sporting organization. How do you look on that and what are your plans to mark that event? 
Uh, well, first on the events, uh, we are happy that still we're receiving bids from various parts of the world. Sometimes the bids are just not good enough, but uh, uh, the interest exists. And uh, the fact that the candidate tournament is going to be in Toronto, in Canada, is uh, the forward for. We will have one of the junior events in Brazil next year. Uh, we'll have events uh, in um, uh, Italy, in Romania. Uh, uh, in um, Germany, uh, so... Uh, so we're still diversifying. Yeah, yeah, we, we are looking at this balance uh, every time. Uh, of course, for biggest events where we need millions uh, for one tournament, uh, uh, well, completely impossible to do it without the government invol uh, involvement. Uh, and that's the same in uh, all sports, I would say. Uh, even for um, football, which is the most popular uh, sport around the world by far, even as compared to the Olympic um, uh, Games, uh, still without the government support, uh, the World Cups would not be p uh, possible. Uh, so uh, it's natural to uh, look uh, for, for uh, the government support uh, around the world, but smaller events we are doing uh, everywhere. Uh, there are no limitations. And next year, for 100 year anniversary, I can assure you that the events will take place at all continents without any limitations. Uh, so Europe, Americas, uh, Africa, Asia, uh, everywhere. Uh, but for us, 100 year uh, uh, anniversary is not uh, just a number. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's a chance um, uh, to uh, unite the global chess community even more than before. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we are going to have is the Olympic torch relay uh, that will start in India, mother of uh, chess, and uh, will go across the world uh, uh, where we'll have festivals, um, uh, tournaments, uh, uh, social activities, um, uh, conferences, uh, uh, all kinds of uh, things. Uh, and uh, uh, this way we will uh, like uh, put uh, the common Connect the whole uh, yeah, world. connection to, uh, to uh, all parts of the world. So probably we're not going to visit uh, every country, but certainly every region in the world will be, uh, will be visited. And uh, um, that's really uh, important for us. Uh, uh, also, we want to make sure that people know the chess history. That's why we are going to have quite a few exhibitions. Uh, in different parts of the world um, uh, to uh, give people uh, an idea uh, of how chess developed uh, uh, throughout centuries, uh, but also an idea of what we are doing uh, now, uh, what uh, uh, FIDE uh, and what the chess um, world uh, is now, not just events, not just uh, world champions uh, and uh, Olympiad winners, uh, but uh, thousands of um, players uh, uh, professional amateurs, um, uh, just uh, community players, uh, club players that, uh, that are happy being involved uh, into that. Uh, and um, uh, finally, that's, uh, that's also uh, a chance uh, uh, to create uh, a common vision about the future of chess. You're asking what are our plans, uh, we want to build plans together. Uh, of course, we have um, priorities uh, that um, are very clear to make uh, FIDE itself sustainable, to keep uh, uh, the official chess going uh, forward, uh, including world championship cycles, open and women, Olympiads, uh, uh, kids events, uh, senior events. Uh, uh, second uh, is uh, to um, make sure that uh, our social role is expanding uh, and we reach out to uh, all uh, uh, communities, um, uh, and uh, we are really happy to be involved in that. And the third thing, um, also a very clear ambition, is to uh, make sure that chess is one of the most popular sports uh, uh, and competes uh, with uh, other popular sports, uh, uh, both uh, having our event, but also involved in multi-sport events, uh, uh, in um, Olympic events or events are under Olympic umbrella. Uh, including Olympic esports, uh, but not uh, only, including uh, African, Asian, uh, Pan American, and European Games. Uh, uh, and is eventually, FIDE hopefully, as the uh, Olympic, main yeah, Olympic so. Games. Well, FIDE has recently become partners with the uh, esports e uh, organization. Globally. Yes, we are partnering um, a major esports organization, in particular, uh, Global Esports Federation. Uh, but now there is integration going on uh, in uh, global esports. Uh, so hopefully it will, it will be represented by one uh, strong organization that will be a strong partner to IOC and to FIDE, of course. And uh, chess uh, is now uh, involved already in um, global esports events. Uh, 
uh, which is uh, a happy development for us, uh, uh, since uh, now people understand that uh, chess is boss, uh, normal game on the on the board, board, but also a part of uh, cyber sport community, which is good for the new generation, since uh, that attracts more and more kids uh, into the game. When do you think we'll see chess in the Olympic Games? It's uh, one of the oldest federations, uh, but it's not a member of the IOC, but still we don't have chess in the Olympics. Correct. Uh, uh, and uh, that's one of the things uh, that we are uh, pursuing um, uh, all the time, but we changed the approach and uh, that, uh, I think, helped us to be closer. Uh, we started working with um, regional, continental, uh, um, sometimes even national uh, organizations uh, to bring chess uh, into multi-sport games everywhere and when chess will be part of multi-sport games everywhere plus esports uh, it will be much harder for the olympic committee international olympic committee to resist bringing chess into olympics uh, but um, uh, to uh, make sure we do this last step we need to uh, chess uh, uh, to become also a sport that can be viewed uh, through tv and internet uh, um, as a show uh, for wider uh, audience as other sports uh, already have uh, and improving our media products is a huge element of uh, going to this uh, uh, olympic uh, uh, family uh, and fulfilling our olympic dream for me it is important since uh, well personally I, i'm raised on the olympic ideals uh, and uh, on uh, on having um, olympic champions as uh, stars uh, in the sport world. So having uh, chess players uh, who will mm, be proudly named Olympic champions uh, is a huge thing for me. But uh, having our own Olympics uh, is equally important. So we are not going to give up what we already have. We can only add to that. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, Akali Dvorkovic, thank you very much for your time uh, and the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. It was good uh, uh, talking together on those exciting things. Thank you so much.